Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, guys? Pastor Jim Kreese here, lead pastor of Atmosphere. And Pastor Phil and I are about ready to go and change somebody's life. Amen. With dollar bills. That's right. We did a plus one challenge at our church last Sunday. And well, today we took everybody's dollar bill. We cashed them in and we got hundred dollar bills and we were able to raise a thousand dollars from our plus one challenge on Sunday. So we're about ready to go into a drive through and give a thousand dollars cash to a person that God is going to lead us to. And so you're going to be able to be witnesses of this, that your little bit with my little bit together makes a big difference in somebody else's life. So I can't wait to show you the rest. Okay, well now I have something for you. Okay, I hope you're ready for this. Okay, so we're pastors at, at a church here yeah. in town. So this last Sunday, I had everybody bring a dollar yeah. and we put all the dollars together. And I said, we're just gonna go out and do a random act of kindness being led by God. Yeah. So we've been in prayer today and we felt God prompt us to come here. And we felt that God said, whoever would help us is going to be the person that we're supposed to bless. So we're here to tell you God loves you. He sees you. He cares about you. And because of that, our church got a thousand dollars. This is for you. This is for you. I don't know what's going on in your life, but God sent us here like it's like angels. He says, take care of her. Yeah. They just. I knew it. I knew it. We were praying, and I knew it. I knew it. It's funny because my grandma was very about me. She's like, if you believe, if you care, you were gonna, you were gonna see how like what you're going through and what you're gonna do. Somehow bless you as long as you give other people kindness. Kindness is you. He's real. God is real, and I've I've given my whole life to God. And I continue to see him move just like this, just like him prompting me yeah. to be able to come here and give you this. So here's this. And I got two more things for you. All right. Okay. So then I was like, I got to give her a book. So this is, this is my personal book. So I have my name on it, yeah. but you're supposed to read this. Yes. It's called the purpose driven life. Yeah. It changed my life. And it's funny for us because we can have autism in that book. Oh, and, and it puts them well, check out, and, and my father-in-law wrote this as a, like a daily little prayer book. So read this to them. They're yeah. really little short prayers yeah. that you can pray like every day over the kids. Yeah. But, but this is for you. So you got kids with autism? I do. Oh. Well, I mean, if you don't have a church, you can always come and visit us. We're, we're off of Townsgate. I know you got a customer, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you for sending us here to bless her today, God. We pray, Lord, that you continue to provide for her and her kiddos and pray that this would just be a, a, a way, God, that she sees that you're real and that you love her and you care about her. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, have a great day. All right. Yes.
Uh, that was your sermon for the morning. I didn't need to talk after that. But welcome, you guys, uh, to Atmosphere Church. My name is Pastor Jim. I'm the lead pastor of Atmosphere, and we are so grateful that you guys chose to gather with us today, and some of you are brand new or to our church, and this is the kind of stuff we love to do. I told Pastor Phil, I go, I just want to do this every day. So I'm thinking every week we need you guys to bring a dollar, and I, I think, I mean, we will change our whole entire valley with stories like this. This is awesome. Somebody's like, how, like, how'd you think of it? I go, I don't know. We just prayed. God led us. And this is the kind of lifestyle all of us can be living every day of our lives if we choose. That's what's so powerful. You don't need a theology degree to do this. You just need a heart of generosity. And we're living in such an affluent culture around us and, and you know, the people at drive throughs and maybe we don't even think about that. But here was this precious woman, probably a young adult, with two kids with autism that God randomly, is not random, it was purposeful, that we randomly went to this drive-thru and God had a divine appointment for us. And we couldn't have done it without your dollar. And you're like, you know, how many of us just have dollar bills just stashed everywhere? It's like, I don't know, it's like getting in my way. It's like, get out of here, dollar bill. But we put all of our dollar bills and it made a big difference. So just let that be just a a God-sized idea for you as you are just going about town and you're running into people like this, that that there are assignments, heavenly assignments that God has waiting for all of us if we choose to look for them. All right? So uh, we are taking a week off of a series. Last week, we finished up an I Am series that... Uh, my son said that uh, some of his friends like, that's the best series we've ever done as a church. And I loved it. So I hope you loved it. But next week, we're starting a brand new series for the summer called Summer in the Psalms, Timeless Wisdom for an Endless Summer. All right. So it's going to be good. But this week, we wanted to pause because it just felt like in the rhythm of our church, it felt like the right moment to do a big reveal. Because many of you already know the journey that we've had uh, when we started back in 2018 as a church that led us up to just a a few weeks ago, it's two months ago to be exact, that, that we were told that this building that we're presently in was being made available to us. So I I have a form of whiplash because everything happens so fast and it happened so fast that we had people going to the golf course going, what happened to Atmosphere Church? It's like, did they disappear? Were they all raptured? Where'd they go? And uh, so, so here we are at this new location and we knew coming over here that we were losing about 50 seats in the auditorium. And so it, it was like, oh, I don't know. But simultaneously, why this was happening God was working on another auditorium for us, just two spaces down in the same complex. And and I'll get to that in a moment. But before I do, I want to just kind of take today just to pause and and just review some of the amazing ways that God has met us as a church. Because I believe as you see, just like how God loves to invade people's lives and radically transform them, just like that woman at the drive-thru, that God has radically taken a group of people and he's using them in powerful ways to change a whole entire community. So Tara and I, in 2016, we started feeling this unsettlement with the current situation that we were in. We were leading a life-giving, thriving church in Las Vegas And everything was on the incline. Everything was good. We were having like 30 people give their lives to Christ almost every Sunday. I mean, just story after story of miracles and healings and deliverances. I mean, I could keep you here a whole year telling you all the ways that God did supernatural things for us in Vegas. So it was just surreal for us to start feeling a prompting that this wasn't supposed to be where we are to finish our ministry. And so we kind of started feeling this release from Vegas, but then we were like, 
then where are we being released to go to? And that's where Thousand Oaks comes in because I had this series of events happen. I called my buddy, Pastor Darren Laws, who many of you still know and are connected with. And he had a church here for a while that he was leading. And so I, I had him as a guest speaker several times. So he said, I'm going to reach out to Darren and see if he could pray over us because I was just feeling this unrest that was that was super, you know, bothering me and bothering my wife. And so he gave me this word. He's saying, you know, hey, wherever you go, that's where God is going to be because God is with you. And God isn't just meeting you at this location that God has called you to minister no matter where you're at, what your location. And I don't know exactly how he said it, but there was a release in that phone call that God was, was telling me it was okay to embrace the thought that there may be a new season that God was calling into Tara and I's life. Because I was struggling with that because so many good things were happening in Vegas. I was thinking if this is not of God, if, if maybe this is the devil to get me out of town, then last time that happened in the Bible where somebody was disobedient to their call, they got swallowed by a fish. So I was like, I don't know what kind of fish God has in store for me, but I don't want to be in the belly of a fish. So I was just really concerned about this. I felt as though through that, there was a release. So Tara and I started a season of prayer that lasted about nine months where God started miraculously putting Thousand Oaks on our heart through these series of events, which culminated uh, to a moment where we decided that this wasn't God just releasing us from Las Vegas. This was God calling us to Thousand Oaks. And so... You know, starting a church is a difficult process. I don't know how many of you have, have ever been in that, that situation, but, you know, here I was, I was approaching 50 at the time. I was like, I don't want to start over again. I literally had a friend in Vegas say, what are you doing? You've got this church of 2,500 people. It's like, you've got this battleship and you're going to go and start a new church. It's like getting on a dinghy. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, just enjoy the fruit of your labor. And I go, man, I, I can't ignore this. But we didn't know where the provision was going to come from. And we thought a guy was going to donate money, and he didn't. And so, you know, it, it came to a point where Tara and I were like, if we do this, we got to come up with the money ourselves. And we didn't want to ask anybody. So we put our house up for sale. And we took all the equity, and we said, this is going to be how we start Atmosphere Church. And I really feel like God wanted us to do it that way because he wanted to show us that you can't outgive me, Jim and Tara. And through the process, we, we had this whole plan. We were going to do these little pre-services. And, and through 2017 or 2018, we were doing these. And then on September 16th, 2018, some of you were there. We had our very first gathering officially as a church. And that was amazing. We had 250 people come and it was an amazing experience. And it just got more amazing after that, because here we were meeting at a golf course that we thought was like so great. And uh, we were being turned out by schools, which we were bummed about, but then we got the golf course and, and then we just continued to grow. We continued to flourish. And then that led us into this pandemic. And, you know, many of the schools and, and, and movie theaters where church plants like us were meeting told those church plants they couldn't meet there. And so many church plants in COVID, in the pandemic, they didn't make it out because they'd no, they had no place to meet. We just happened to be at a golf course that happened to have an amphitheater. Now, I was asking somebody the other day, how many golf courses in America have a built-in amphitheater? I, I want somebody to do some research for me and tell me, because I'm convinced we have the only one. And God, in his divine providence, put us at a golf course that had an amphitheater that loved the idea of having a church in the midst of, uh, of a pandemic, and we continued to meet. And not only did we survive COVID, we thrived in COVID. We doubled in size in COVID to the point where we ran out of room at the golf course. And so that sent us on a quest. We need a building. God, give us a building. And, you know, I had three different commercial real estate agents looking, and, and I would bother them, and they're like, nothing, nothing, nothing. And so I just got tired of it, and I told Terry, I said, let's get in the car, and let's go on a drive. And we did a prayer drive. And so we started driving around town looking for a building. We're not real estate agents, but we are spirit-led people. So we said, let's just let God lead us to the building. And so we were led to Townsgate Road right here. 
And we pulled into this parking lot across the street and I found a building and it was like a perfect church building. I was like, wow, this is it. And I called the guy to look like everything was happening and it was like gonna all come together and I was pretty excited about it. And then the guy that was helping us said, hey, the building is, is in escrow and there's a new owner coming in. I, I go, is this good or bad for the church? He goes, I don't know yet. Maybe good, maybe bad. Well, it turned out it was bad because the new owner had other plans for that space. He did not want a church in there because he said, you churches take up all kinds of parking spaces and I don't need you to take up my parking spaces. So they said no. But in the process of thinking that we're gonna move in there, I thought it would be neighborly to come across the street and meet Pastor Leaf Swirling, who pastored Shepherd's House Church. I said, hey, I might be neighbors. I don't know how you feel about having a church across the street, but hey, it, we're, we're kingdom, right? We're for the same kingdom. So let's get together, let's hang out. And he showed you know, Pastor Phil and I the space. And, and that was it. It was like right around the same time. I didn't really follow up with that. I just was like, that's cool. And, and nine months later, Pastor Lee calls me. He texts me, actually, as we were trying to work a deal out with a kid's suite across from the, the golf course where we were thinking that this is the only option. Our kids were literally meeting under an oak tree, all right? So this is like Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> now, you know, and some of you are like, well, this is great. You know, it's great unless it's raining. And fortunately, it sounds weird. Fortunately, we're in a drought. And, you know, that was good for us, bad for our environment. But I, I'm, I'm looking through this going, this is not a sustainable future for us as a church. You know, families want a safe, clean environment. And dirt under an oak tree does not scream safe and clean. All right? So we got, we got a problem here. So we were thinking about what it was going to cost. It was going to cost like $250,000 to build this thing out. And I was like, okay, and it's a three-year lease. And the golf course is like, we're only going to renew you a year at a time. And, and I'm like, man, you know, Smokey Robinson golfs at, at Los Robles Greens. Every Sunday, some of you have seen him in the parking lot. I said, the first time Smokey comes to golf and Atmosphere Church has taken up all the parking, we are going to be kicked out. Like he's going he's gonna to say, hey, there's no parking. They're like, get rid of that church. We want Smokey Robinson. You know, and I was really concerned about this. And so as they're like kind of trying to figure stuff out for the building, then, you know, you know the story where a dentist came and he said, I might want it. And they backed us off. Pastor Leaf is prompted to text me. And in that text, he says, I'd like to talk to you about this, uh, about something. And, and so I put the other guys off who wanted me to sign the next day. I mean, think about the timing. He texts me Thursday night. They want me to sign a lease Friday morning. Think about the timing of that. So I put them off and I meet with Pastor Leaf. And then through that series of events, I found out that they've been in a season of prayer asking God how they're going to sustain this building with all of the things that they've endured as a church. So we became the sustainable plan for them to move forward. But at the same time, I told Pastor Leaf, I go, I love this building. It's a great space, but it's not big enough for us. We've already outgrown the auditorium. We've outgrown the kids facility. And I don't know if this is going to work. And he said, well, I think the end unit is coming open. And so we come over that day as we're meeting for lunch and I'm thinking it's not gonna work. The owner of the building is inside. He lives in Sherman Oaks. His name is Cliff, he's a great guy. And so we meet him and Leaf introduces me to him. And he says, I tell you what, I would love to have another church here. And especially if you're gonna be meeting in both buildings, this would be great for us. And he said, uh, let's make a deal. And, and so he was so kind and gracious. I haven't heard this price, but he was ready to rent the building to us for a buck 10 a square foot. Now, I, I know like some of you, like, that's like, you know, what does that even mean? Just to give you context, buildings around Westlake are running about anywhere from three to $7 a square foot. So it's way under market. I'm like, wow, this guy really does want a church. Well, then a week later, as we're kind of, going through the motion, trying to get everything negotiated, I find out that a basketball thing is trying to gun for the, the space. And I was like, what is going on? Everyone wants the space. So our leaders got together. We prayed over. We said, we're going to pull the trigger on this thing, even though not, none of the stuff has worked out quite yet for the city, but we're going to pull the trigger because we don't know if there's a real guy or if there's a basketball team. Well, it turns out that we sign on the day after Mother's Day and that Cliff, the owner, says, well, I'm so glad you signed. Uh, the, the basketball guy says LeBron James is out there on Mother's Day. They're plotting and planning what they're going to do. We have this NBA facility or whatever. But, hey, we signed. 
that building is ours. It's not LeBron James's, it's ours. <laughs> Maybe we'll invite him, he'll come. But it's, it's happened so fast. This is like, I feel a sense like, like none of you really know what is going on. You're like, hey, wait a minute. Like we moved in this building, but now we got another building. Like what is happening? And my, my, my answer is, I really don't know. <laughs> like it's all happening so, so fast. But this is what I do know, that if God provided us a, an extra bigger space, that means that he is wanting us to make room for more. And uh, there, there's a few extra seats in this room right now, but in, at the 11, we had the overflow was, was maxed out, that there was no room. And five o'clock, there's 120 people coming to the five o'clock. So, so all of these services are necessary and we probably even need to add one more. And it's just, it's not, we're not able to do it with the parking structure that we have. So here's, here's my takeaway is God is moving us into a new season. He's moving us into a new chapter, just like for many of you, for you personally, for you and your family, God's moving you into a new season. I wanna declare right now in Jesus' name, there is a new season coming for you. There's a new chapter breaking loose for you. Embrace it and embrace it with a new song in your heart. I hope that and pray that today when you leave this place, there will be a new song coming out from the depths of your soul, declaring to your soul that there is a God who is making all all things new for your life. I believe it. And he's making all things new for our church. So it, it, we're not just renting a space, we're building a house. We're building a house. Some of you that have built a house, you know what steps are required to build a house, but I, I want you to embrace this as God's house. And I, there, there's four things that, that I wanna just define and then I'm gonna show you guys a little preview of what's to come, but write this down, is, is we're building a house of love or building a house of love. One of the things that God was super clear to Tara and I in, in, in our leadership, our first prayer meeting over at Craig and Pam's house, that God supernaturally met us and there's about 10 of us at that prayer meeting and said, the mantra of Atmosphere Church is gonna be the mantra of love. That's why our bumper stickers is love, period. Because really, I mean, there's a lot of qualities that, that Jesus gives us from living on the inside of us, but the greatest quality is the quality of love. And we can all use an upgrade in that department, can't we? You know, it's easy to love people that love us, but how are you doing with loving people that aren't very lovable? <laughs> And Jesus gets on the inside of us and he helps us elevate that quality. And, and so I felt, and so did all the leaders at that prayer meeting felt like this is going to be the reputation of Atmosphere Church. It's gonna be a house of love that people are gonna come in here broken and wounded and hurting. And they're gonna be met there with a triage center of people, of first responders for heaven, and that they're gonna be bringing these people in, giving them Scotty hugs, giving them, giving them some prayer, and, and just making sure that they're loved and seen and cared for. It's a house of love. But we're also a house of prayer. We believe that everything that happens here happens by the grace of God. It can't happen on our own strength. It can't happen on our own power. It happens by God. And the only way that we are able to walk in the supernatural is by embracing and really immersing ourselves in the presence of God, the presence of God. And the presence of God only really is felt when we are in prayer with God. So we want prayer to be a huge part of who we are as a church. And some of you that are newer to our church, we do twice a year, we do what's called 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're about ready to start a new one here in the month of August that'll go for 21 days and we do it again in January for 21 days. And it's gonna be amazing to actually meet in an auditorium and not be freezing out in an amphitheater. Um, but it's gonna be amazing that we're gonna be gathered together. I'm hoping that in the new facility, we're gonna be able to have a 24 seven prayer room, uh, which is, was really big for us in Vegas. And uh, I would love to see that prayer room. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, you have a room that you can retreat to and just say, I need to go to the church and I need an hour in the prayer room. Uh, and we're gonna hopefully be able to accomplish that. We're a house of prayer. The next thing is we're a house of healing. Or a house of healing. We understand that, that people coming in here are not perfect people. <laughs> 
Nobody that comes into these doors are perfect people. Matter of fact, many people, most people that are walking in here still got arrows sticking in them from stuff that they've went through, not just in their life, but in their week. And they're coming in here and they're just saying, God, I need you to heal me. Heal us of wounds, heal us of hurts, heal us of, of these things that have happened against our life, offenses from other people. And this is really a trauma center for people to come in and meet with the great physician, Jesus, so that he can heal them. Folks, it was such a, a picture for me when we started gathering for a Thursday night Bible study at the Best Western Hotel. One of our first meetings that we had, we had a healing take place, a physical healing. And I believe God used that to show me that this is gonna be a healing place. This is gonna be a healing place of people that have emotional trauma. This is gonna be a healing place of people that have mental trauma. This is gonna be a place, a healing place for people that have physical trauma. And God has shown up so many times and healed people of ailments and issues and it's still happening. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still healing people, church. So I want you to hold on to that hope that he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. So this is a healing place. This is a house of healing. And it's also a house of training. Somebody asked me like, what's what's your plan for discipleship? Well, our plan of discipleship is, this is part of it, all right? You showing up and you getting encouraged and inspired to go live a generous life. That's part of the discipleship. But we wanna even bring that discipleship into a deeper layer. We're we're doing some things in the future that are gonna involve life groups that are gonna be taking people through some some serious training on the word of God. Uh, We're also gonna be taking uh, some steps here in the next three months starting a Bible college. I know it sounds crazy, but some of you are like, hey, I just want to get deeper in the word and I want to know more about the word. We want to train leaders up to send them out. We, we, want to, we, we want to have missionaries around the world. We want to have pastors that are planting churches around the nation. And we want to get behind that. And so we want to be that training center that somebody can come in broken and see God heal them and then f- discover their purpose and then be sent out to make a difference. That, that's our plan. That's our strategy. That's our vision of, of mission uh, for Atmosphere Church. So we're a house of training. So as, as you think about all of these things, we need a facility that we can call our own. This is like we're, we're living in somebody else's house here. I want you to know that. So having a, another space that we can call our, our own home is, is pretty significant, especially when, when you think like, how is this going to happen? Like, how are we going to build this house? Well, I'm going to take you back to a scripture and text in Exodus, and I got to be really rapid here. But there's a, a text in Exodus where they were about ready to build God's first house, the tabernacle or the tent of meeting. And just like our dollar, you know, dollar plus one challenge, Moses had this vision that God gave him about how they were going to build this house. And it says in verse 21, chapter 35, everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments, and they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Jumping down to verse 29, all the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. So everybody's contributing. So it's not like on one person's shoulders, like everybody coming together, like we we can do this. We we can build this house and jump down to next chapter, verse two. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab. Um, Zach and Emily, there's a baby name for you right there, okay? They're about ready to have a baby. It's so exciting. And every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work, they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. 
It says, and the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave a new order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. Stop bringing your offering. That's what he's saying here. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. This is, what, a, what a rush. Can you imagine me coming up here one Sunday and going, guys, please stop giving your offering. We have enough. Like, please. It's just like, that blows my mind. But, but see, the people who were willing knew that the house was so important for us to be able to do the things that God wants us to do that they all came together and they did it. And, and it wasn't a lot because everyone gave a little bit. So my, my challenge to you is that if, if we are entering into this new season, what if we just all came together and nobody had to give like this big gift per se, but what if we all brought a little bit? This is interesting to me. Most of you have Disney Plus. At least I know we do. Man, Obi-Wan, what a great series, by the way. I, I'm just loving that. I'm a Star Wars geek, all right? Uh, I'm proud of it. But Disney Plus, $7.99 a month. Everyone's like, Psh, yeah. You know, high school kids are like, yeah, I'll do that. That's no big deal, $7.99. That's how much it costs at Starbucks for one drink almost these days. So $7.99, everyone's like, yeah, sign me up for that. So it doesn't sound like a significant amount, but when everybody is doing it like they're doing it, you know how much Disney is bringing in from Disney Plus on a monthly basis? $1.44 billion a month from your $7.99 a month subscription. Everyone's like, what a brilliant idea. <laughs> but the, the, reason I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I want you to see that this is obtainable. This is doable that, you know, I'm going to have Rick, who is our contract to come up and, and have some of my leaders come up. They're estimating that there is going to be a cost of building a house. It's going to cost us about 600 grand to do everything. And that sounds daunting until you start thinking about, okay, we have over 600 families in our church now. What if every family between now and December decided that they were going to pledge a thousand extra dollars to building the house? Now, all of a sudden, okay, $1,000 from now in, in December, that's, that's nothing. Compared to all the things that we're going to be able to do from the center, it's going to be amazing. So just think about it in, in bite-sized pieces. Like if every family took $1,000 and said, man, this is terrible timing. Do you know the economy is, is like in, like it's on fire right now? And, and not to add gasoline to the fire, but have you seen the gas prices, Pastor? Like, don't ask us for more money. And, and I'm, I'm there and I don't want to really even ask this, but God put this on our lap. And he's like, I, I'm providing this house for you. But now we just have to, we, what we have to do is we just have to build it. And I think we can do it. I think this is achievable. I think this is doable. Just to give you an idea is we're going to open the, the kind of the roll up door in the back. So when you leave, you can go down this hallway out the back door and around and you're gonna see all of the, the space that we're gonna be building out. But to give you an idea of what is coming for Atmosphere Oricon, Atmosphere 3.0, go ahead and check out this video.
Yeah, I, w- I want you to give it up for some of our leaders here at Atmosphere. They're under the bright lights. And um, I just wanted them to speak because all, all of them have a story. And then uh, Rick is, uh, he's, uh, um, he's batting cleanup because he's our contractor. So uh, Rick, I appreciate you, bro. All, all the work that you've put into this. I feel like you're in the shadow down there. But uh, anyway, so uh, I'll let you guys talk for a few minutes. What do you think, Craig? It all started at your house, bro. It started at his house in his backyard. Wow. It's amazing. We love you, brother. We thank you. So thankful you're here. And I don't know if you realize about the church, but there was a remnant of us, about 40 people that were just praying. We didn't want a church with a big building. We didn't want a church really that was lifeless. We wanted a church that walked in all the fullness and the power of the resurrection of the book of Acts. But we needed a pastor to do that. And we're so thankful you're here. But like Jim said, it all started in my backyard and I had no idea where this was going. I mean, you all know I play drums. Thank you for letting me out of my cage. And um, <laughs> I, I have texts case. that set all my drums up and I'm like, Lord, are you kidding me? I'm getting too old for this. You want me to take my drums every week? We had no idea what was going to go on. But I can tell you this, I've been involved in all the meetings with Pastor Jim and in the council here. And all we are doing is we're praying to release the Holy Spirit in this valley to set the captives free. We all know our kids, right? And the kids in this valley, we get them so full of everything. They got softball or or basketball every day of the week. Then they have tournaments on the weekend. And then we want them to be smart. So we send them to math tutors and they got more things going on in their schedule than we did or ever thought of when we were younger. So we always got them busy. We're teaching them how to be great in the world, but they don't have the kingdom of God. And the heart of our church is to really go after people, as you saw today with Jim, to just love people, to bring the book of Acts to this Mm. community. This enemy has had this community for too long. It's robbed from families. Look at how many single moms over in the Knolls. It is just, he's racked this area. And our church is really to go after the loss, to allow Jesus Christ to live here and think about it. We have a tremendous opportunity today. Remember when Jesus taught the 5,000 and the disciples said, hey, go send them so they can eat. Jesus said, don't send them away. You feed them. We have a tremendous opportunity. And as Jim said, we believe that everything we need to build this building is in this church right now. If we think, well, maybe we don't have enough. We can only give a little. Didn't Jesus settle that with the woman that just gave the two copper coins? Or Lord, I'm not making enough money. Gas is too expensive. How am I going to do this? Didn't God say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the God and he will exalt you in due time? Let's start believing that our in jobs, let's not get complacent or see what the world's telling us. Let's believe God that we'll get a promotion, that we'll get a better job, that the financial increase will come in our life supernaturally so we can have to build this out. So it's an amazing time. It's so cool to be part of this, to see where it started in the backyard. And yeah, we got this building and we got the one on the end. And I bet one day the one in the middle is coming too. So come on, somebody. Wow. Wow. It's pretty awesome. Wow. You want me to go next? Yeah. All right. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Milad. And I guess we're, we came in the middle of that. Um, we came two years ago when this was all in a garden. Um, and uh, we stumbled on this when the church we were going to was closed. And uh, we needed a place to go because uh, uh, living room church was getting old with dogs running around and everybody not paying attention. Um, and from the second we walked in, um, we felt loved. Uh, we felt at home. I mean, those signs are say a word, but they're real. Mm-hmm. Um, I travel a ton um, and I've been on the road a lot, but whenever I'm here, I feel at home. Uh, When I'm home, I feel at home, Uh, but but it's it's not the building. Uh, We were trading some texts this week and uh, a a building's a tool. Um, A building provides us the heart to be able to feel at home. It provides us stability. Mm -hmm. Um, It provides us consistency. Uh, and we've just been, again, just so blessed to be able to be part of this. I, I guess a few type of notes that I wrote down. Um, it's been amazing to see how God leads step by step. A lot of times we think we're going to know what the future is, but, um, you know, it's been amazing to see again, just God leading Jim and the leadership team, a door opens and we kind of step in and then we don't know what the next door is going to be. 
and then another door opens and then we step in and then something goes faster and then you speed up and then something slows down and you slow down. And again, that's been the heart of this. Um, the, the other main thing is I've grown and my family have grown. Again, I've been following the Lord for a long time, but I've seen myself grow and stretch. I've seen my family grow and stretch. And again, that's the heart behind all this. Um, there's a special piece to this body that's multi-generational. Look around. There's a lot of, a lot of gray hair like, like mine's becoming or falling out. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful hair like Josiah's. Um, but that's, that's, that's unique, you all. That's very unique. And again, that's, that's, the, that's the spirit behind all this. To have all the young adults, to have all the kids. And I think just finally, the heart behind this is a next generation. And I hope that's what you see here also, is that this spirit of revival, this spirit that's stirring, this heart of love that, that's stirring here, there's a new generation that's being trained, that's being sent out, and that's on fire. And that's what I'm excited about, to see really what's going to happen in the next phase. Amen. Amen. That's so good. I'm, I'm John Moniz. They call me coach. I've coached in the community for 21 years. And, uh, you know, this is just what I've been, we've been praying for as a family to, be, to, to belong to something like this, the heart of God. The only commandment that God calls us to do in the, in the new covenant is to love God and to love people. And there's a tangible presence to that when you enter in this, into this place. So if you look around, you're part of that. Your faithfulness as a disciple to come and receive the word of God, that matters to God. Mm. That matters to God. I'm so, so grateful that the pastor came here with a vision. The Bible says the people perish for lack of vision. So he's speaking that out today. So receive that, what God is, 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 is teaching you and showing you right now by the word of God. Have the ears to hear that because it's so special. Be it in the community and... Uh, Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, this says to go in, in, the, in the nations and make disciples of men and, and women. Well, our nation, our place is this community in which we live. We're, we're called here because he has us here at this appointed time to do the things that he's called us to do. And there's been a lot of seed with our serve days. There's been a lot of seed in the community where people know the love that this church has. And it's God's love. We're, we're nothing but humble servants that want God's perfect will for our lives. As you do, that's why you're here right now. So I just encourage you to receive not only the love of God, but to know that you play a part in that as being a disciple of God. Seed is being planted in this community all the time. And the exciting thing was God showed me a couple years ago when we were starting, to, I could see that we needed to move. He gave me a vision that I prayed with someone else about a, about a church. And in the church, I was speaking it out. I, I was believing God for a sanctuary where we could build it out. Well, if you look on the corner, that's exactly what God has given us. And so it's, it's, we're not gonna get ahead though. We're just gonna go step by step. We're gonna move with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit directs us. So I, we covet your prayers and pray and agree with us that God's perfect will is going to happen. Amen. The Bible says that our steps are ordered of God. So we don't have, we just have to trust that, trust that by faith. There's so many things that, that we as people uh, struggle with, but we, can, we don't have to struggle with God. We just have to love God because the purpose of this is to make disciples of people. This is a broken world. We're all broken in some form or fashion. But if we just do our part, planting seed in the community, someone else is gonna water it and then do seeds and it's gonna bear fruit. And if we're open to that, by the Holy Spirit, then God is going to do the signs and wonders that we saw in the book of Acts. God is going to move in your behalf in a way that you can't even sense the things that are deep within you. So be encouraged as we move forward. Just as you pray about what, you, what part you play, if it's in prayer or whatever that may be, if it's just to, to, to jump alongside somebody, but pray for your pastor, pray for the direction that is necessary to move forward because this is a big move. This is a wonderful community that I've lived in for 42 years. And I've been believing God for this type of church. Not that there's not great churches because there are great churches, but the vision that God has given this church goes in line with what the word, word of God says. Thanks. My name is Kathy, and I'm grateful to have found a safe place here at Atmosphere, where Jim often reminds us, and did again today, 
that we are as much a training center as a trauma center. We serve a God who sees the brokenhearted and those living in bondage. He sees the torment and the trauma, every oppression, addiction, and abuse, and he is in the business of bringing life out of dead places, making rivers flow through wastelands, resurrecting dreams, and bringing hope to wash away despair. He is using atmosphere to bring healing in the lives of many who walk through these doors at the end of their strength. We serve a God of abundance, and he has continued to do a multiplying work in the area of women's healing and recovery ministry that is outstripping the spaces we have. With my battle buddy, Lisa, I have had the privilege of hosting several groups in the past two years. We have grown from three to eight leaders in our second round of Life's Healing Choices and nearly doubled our attendance from 24 to 40 women. All eight of our leaders have completed a year-long step study and are equipped to lead others as they share the healing they have experienced. Here in our new location, we were able for the first time to provide appropriate seating for all of our ladies. Come on. Previously, we didn't have the privacy needed for breakout groups, and some of our ladies had to sit in the hallway because we didn't have the physical space. This short testimony from one of our own, Jennifer R., demonstrates the power of one life changed and the ripple effect that it has. She says, I am one of the living and breathing testimonies that without the support of my tribe, with Jesus at the center, would have surely given up but instead grew stronger than I would have ever imagined to now be able to bring that hope to other hurting women. Jesus is on the move in our church to bring healing to his beloved daughters and sons, and we need the space to draw them in. Together we can do this. Oh, so good. It's good. Thank you, Kathy. My name is Jonathan Hathaway. And I'm basically going to hit two points. Uh, first, how was God? How has God moved through all of this? And also, why is God bringing us to a new home? The first point: uh, How has God moved through this? You heard a lot of the, the specifics uh, from Pastor Jim of all the doors, and, and Malad uh, referenced doors being opened, doors being closed, all the asking, all the seeking, and all the knocking. And through it all. God was there, and he's continued to be there. And you know, the, the, what God put, put on my heart of what's happened with that end unit is it's right out of Proverbs 21.1, where it says, the, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and like rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. God has truly turned the king's heart of the owner on the end unit. So we know we're in his will. And, and the second point, why is God bringing us a new home? You know, it, it's not a coincidence that all of you are here. It's not a coincidence that all of you are part of Atmosphere Church. For whatever reasons you came here and, and, and why you're here, we're grateful. All of us are grateful we're here and that we're, we're doing what we're doing. You know, God's brought all your gifts, all your talents, all your hurts, like Jim talked, everything here. And the, you know, God's word says, you know, the, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. But he's called us to be the laborers. And so with that great honor, the reason I believe that God gave us that end unit is because, you know, we need more space. We need more space for our families, friends, people we're gonna invite, people that God wants to bring into our gathering space to touch and bring them into the, into the sheepfold. And as laborers, you know, we want to help to facilitate that. There's also going to be a lot of outreach done out of that building. We've got concerts, we've got meetings, there's prayer groups, uh, and, and a place for young adults to get together. You know, uh, the options for young adults in this area the, that the world gives are not gonna be anything compared to what God's gonna give in our unit and in the home. And so I just, you know, just, just be encouraged that God's called you and he's called all of us to just put our arms together and work side by side to just continue to step next to him and what he's got for us. Yeah. 
Good morning, church. Uh, it's a little different to look at you guys from this this view instead of uh, the <laughs> other view. Your face. I just want to just I you know I'm not going to be redundant and go over what these guys are saying because I think the common thread is the goodness of God. His faithfulness is new every morning. He is. If I was to probably have a one-on-one with a lot of you people, you're in a really tough season of life. And I'm right there with you. But the thing of it is, is God is faithful. God is good. He works all things for good for those who love him. And he is opening doors that no man can shut. This is going to be whatever God, this is not our church. This is not Jim's church. This is God's church. And when God starts a work, it will be completed. All we got to do is be obedient to what he has called us to do. And we get so overwhelmed in life, just like, how do we do this? Because right now it's a tough, tough season to keep your head above water. And people are losing hope. They're losing hope. I mean, if we get real and the anger and the violence and the suicide and all the stuff that's going on in our world. But sometimes we go, God, where are you? Where are you? What is going on? But I love the, the sermon, but with God. But remember the but, God is in control of everything. He holds, he knew we were going to be here today. He knew we were going to have this presentation He knew every one of you people, because I've been here from the very conception of this church, and you're a lot of new faces, let me tell you, because the old people that started with us, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't here anymore for one reason or another. They're all in Texas. Yeah, they're in Texas. (laughs) They bailed on us. They bailed on us. You know, it's you, Jim. They left because of you, you know. But we just, we just, we know that this is... God is leading and the spirit of God is doing this work, not us. So I think it takes the weight off of us to realize that, you know, in our lives, in our just in this endeavor that we're doing, that God is fighting the battle. And there's always a battle when we, we have had so much stuff in the background that it comes against us and we're all just going like, really? Really? Like the door opens and then it shuts. The door opens and then, but the enemy, that's how he does. That's his game plan. He's always going to do that. So he loves to kill, steal, and destroy. So what we need to do is stand and fight. And we need to say, remember, we win. We win. So I think what it is, is that we don't know how much longer we're going to be on this earth. Personally, I think, look up for your redemption is going to draw near, nearer than you think. But I think what's asking is God, I think, is just asking us to get prepared for, we got to be so heavenly minded that we're no, you know, we, the, the earth is fading away. We know it is. So let's gather together. And I think the biggest thing that we started this church, and it was a common thread, love God and show people who Jesus Christ is and teach them well. And you know what? Love people. Right. All walks of people. Come on in. You know what? You're broken. So am I. You know what? Let's hug each other. Let's hug it out. You know? And, and they're not and getting by you, dude. They're not getting by me. And I believe me, I'm, I'm going to find you and I'll hunt you down. I'm going to find you and I'm going to hug you. But I want to let you guys know how much we love you as leaders. We pray for you. And when there's a need that you're going through, that's why we're here. We're here to go ahead and say, throw out, no matter how insignificant you might think your prayers might be, like, well, I need this, but I don't want to bother. Like, tell us what you need, because that's why we're here. We, we count it a privilege to really pray for you guys. And we want to know what's going on in your life, because you know what? We are the family of God. We are the family of God. We're going to spend eternity together. So you better start liking each other now. Right now. Come you on, know? somebody. You know? Yeah, thank but, you, Scotty. I, got, I know we're, we're almost over time here. So, uh, Rick, you're batting clean up. I mean, as a contractor and as a kind of a newer person in our community, um, he just moved here from Bakersfield. <laughs> So he and I, we have great fellowship going, God brought us to the promised land. It's amazing. So give us your perspective, bro. Um, 
My name is Rick Pratt. I'm, I'm from Bakersfield family and I moved here a year ago. Uh, thank you, COVID, for getting us that opportunity. Uh, I am a VBF for Tara's dad, Jim's father-in-law's church. Been there for 14 years in Bakersfield. Had the, it's just a great place. This teaching's awesome. It's life-changing. Started a construction business in 2008. That was great timing. Um, <laughs> to not a dollar to my name, broke as could be. Um, BBF needed, needed uh, some work done. I, I got time, I don't have any work. <laughs> went out and started, went out and did it, volunteered, helped with it, and let me tell you, you cannot outgive God. From there on, I don't know what happened or how it happened, but I can afford to live in Thousand Oaks now, so... I am, we are honored to be here and to be able to be a part of this and um, been working with, been working on trying to find this building, this space, helping through the permitting process, planning, blah, 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 for the last, it's been six, eight months now or something like that. Um, man, God opened doors, closed doors, put this building in front of us. It is supposed to be ours. This church had to step out in faith, paying for that and signing that that lease because there's no guarantee. There was, there's still no guarantee. We're close. We're real, real close now though, about, about to get this thing solved, the parking permit issue. Um, so could use some help. I'm going to build it. Um, December is a little too far out. I think we're going to get, I think we're going to need money sooner than that. So everybody <laughs> do it sooner. Uh, Cause no, I think, I think it'll go fairly quickly, but go. after the service, I'm going to meet over at that building. If you go around the back, that back door will be open. Um, anybody wants to look, any questions, anybody wants to help or know somebody who wants to help, uh, knows any of the trades, anything like that. Um, love to talk to you. Anyways, God bless you guys. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much, man. And, and, uh, I, I have a scripture, and then we'll, we'll get the band out here, but 2 Corinthians 8, 7 says, but since you excel in everything in faith and speech and knowledge and complete earnestness and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. And, you know, it's, it's always a bummer when you invite your uh, friend to come to church, and it's a talk on giving. You're like, ah, man. So, uh, sorry, Brent and Jennifer, so they brought their friends today. So... You know, hopefully the, uh, hopefully the, the, the plus one uh, God story will help. <laughs> um, but uh, honestly, you guys, the, the idea of excelling is the idea of giving above and beyond. And you can't outgive God. I have story after story in my own personal life. These guys all have stories in their personal lives. And we have story after story, even now in a four-year-old church where God is, is moving in powerful ways. So... You know, if you can give, great. And if, if you can't right now, we totally understand. Just pray for us. Pray for Rick as, as he endeavors in this job. Um, what he's doing for 200000 would probably cost us, if, if we didn't have a contractor, probably 500000 He's doing it at his cost, which is amazing. Most of the, the cost of the building is all the audio, video, lighting stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we spent probably $80,000 uh, upgrading and updating uh, this space and, and helping Shepherd's House. Uh, but we have, I think there's a slide uh, right now, um, thanks to a, a very, very uh, generous donor, uh, somebody, somebody gave us 50000 this week. To, to, we had 25000 left over after everything was done with, with securing the property and doing all that. So we're starting our fund with $75,000, which is, which is a great start. And then I think we, they have another QR code uh, where if you guys feel led to give, this, this is what's called the Kingdom Builders Fund. And we're doing a dinner tomorrow night for anybody that feels like they want to excel in giving and they want to give above and beyond. You come, you're our guest. We'll give you a free dinner and tell you more about the, uh, the different uh, uh, visions that we have, not just for building a building. I mean, Malad said it well, that's just a tool. There's so much we want to do in this valley for God's kingdom and really literally around the world. So you're invited as my guest to the Kingdom Kingdom dinner, uh, the uh, Kingdom Builders dinner tomorrow night. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, Andy, I didn't give you a lot of time to lead worship, but I feel like we got to end with some worship. So thanks, you guys. Give it up for our leadership team. Um, 
And if you guys need to leave, I know we're, we're in overtime right now. You have my, my blessing to leave. And, and uh, uh, let me pray this. Father, as we, as we end our, our gathering with worship, Lord, we, we want to just give you our response for the goodness and the grace that you have provided our church, God. Lord, I, th- I think of that, that old prophetic saying in the Old Testament, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God, none of this is by our might. None of this is by our power, God. It's all by your spirit. And we just want to be conduits of heaven to let your spirit move through us to change our city, to change our valley, to change our nation, to change our world through you, Jesus. So more of you, more of your presence, more of your spirit. We thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in our lives. And we respond to you with our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able to, would you stand and let's worship. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.